we lock the open sideline position in this stretch. Did we do this stretch? Uh, no. Flip no. them over under their back. Okay, so we flipped them over like this, yes? Yep, and then we flipped them with that out there. We stuck oh, yeah. our legs in. That's locking them in. Oh, yeah, we just, I just did that to um, entertain you. With <laughs> <laughs> part of the deal right now, but you can't use it. But when you do flip them over into sideline, hang on to the arm, and we're going to bring it over head. And then we're going to stretch your side. Because this whole thing is about uh, opening up the side of the body. And we'll stretch. And we hang on to the arm. Come down. Now when we come down, ideally you always want to be adding support. So I have a tendency to put my knee up against the person, and we're going to be applying a palmer a compression into the side of the head. So I like this one foot to be over here, so that our center is right over the area we're going to be compressing. So we're going to start, and this our contact is the palm of the knee. So take a nice inhale, please. And exhale. And if you did uh, read those two short articles on my blog about of the work, there's a paragraph in there that talks about perpendicular pressure, meaning that we try to put up a field of least resistance and just lean in, creating uh, the compression. One uh, point we're going to be particular to is the gallbladder meridian is a channel of energy that starts right here at the outer corner of the eye. And feel that on yourself, right behind the outer canthus, which this is. There's an indentation. You feel? And that's the beginning of the gallbladder meridian. And all the points in the gallbladder meridian in the head are to help clear your mind a little bit. So this is a good point for um, clearing your mind. something for the Chicago Bears. Really? Yeah. That's he wrote that? No, well, oh. it, 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 there's a song. Uh, yeah, Bear Down. Yeah, but he did it uh, with a zitar. Nice. Oh. So he did it all with Indian music. So he <laughs> sent it to him. I don't know what happened. Uh, he sent me a copy too. So, so we've done compression around the head, and now we're going to address up underneath uh, the occipital ridge. Uh, capiche? Uh, occipital ridge, yeah? Yes. yes. Okay. So there's a muscles underneath there, suboccipital muscles, and uh, they have a variety of functions, but one of the major ones is the rocking and tilting of the head. But also there's a lot of acupressure points under here that in general help with neck uh, stiffness and also headaches. So we're going to dress those with using the tip of our thumb, but we're going to aid that stimulation by placing our hand in this position, cupping the top of the shoulder, and we're just going to place our thumb underneath the occipital ridge, and then we're going to depress the shoulder to get the stimulation. So this has the advantage of stimulating the point, but also stretching the muscles that attach there. So So you want to work up underneath that ridge. You'll find a series of indentations, and uh, that's where the points, the subos, have a tendency to hide on. So after that, we're going to take and do petrissage, a basic Swedish stroke, and we're just going to petrissage the side of the neck. We're following the course of the meridian. It's a yang meridian, and it's working its way down, so it goes, starts on the outside of the the head, and if you look at the charts, it zigzags all through the temporal area, and it comes up underneath the occipital ridge, ridge excuse me, and down the neck, and right onto the top of the shoulder. So one way of dressing the top of the shoulder in the soft tissue area is placing our fingertips one over the other, and just depressing 
and making some nice circles. Here. My brush is okay. So my fingers are going. Excuse me. I'm just going to pull this back for a second. Right into the soft tissue. So it's a graduation of hand position. And then after that, we're just going to interlock our fingers. And they're hooked up on the top of the shoulder. We're going to inhale. And on the exhale, we'll just lean back. And you get a nice stretch of the neck. And if it is a little tight, the head will come off uh, the bolster a little bit. The more you let your head relax, the more it opens up the neck. And from here, range of motion. So one hand is in front and one hand is behind the shoulder girl. Nice range of motion one way, and then the other. And then we let the shoulder fall forward. And when we do that, the vertebral border of the scapula becomes more pronounced. So what we're going to do is take our hand palm up, we're going to hook our fingers up underneath the scapular ridge. And then with this hand, we're going to ease the scapula back on our fingertips, and then we're going to lean to the side. And get a nice stretch. Uh, the scapula has a tendency to get glued onto the back of the um, rib cage. So not only this, this open up of the shoulder girdle so that it can articulate more in a fuller range of motion, but it also gets the attachments of rhomboids and also works a channel of energy, a bladder meridian, as it runs just on the inside of the scapula. So that's okay, babe? So we're generally loosening it, and then we're going to do a little deeper stretch. And then motion it forward, and then we're going to inhale, and then on the exhale we're going to bring it out. So this has a nice stretch, pec minor. But it also opens up all the lines, or the yin lines of the arm that start in and around the chest. That stretch is okay for you? Mm -hmm. Good, good. A little much. How's that now? slowly back. And when you take uh, something, uh, a body part, into a deep stretch, it's important that when you ease out of it, you come out of it slow. Because you know there's something called a stretch reflex. If you go too fast, the muscle jerks. So you want to be nice and easy on the way back. Okay. Now we're going to uh, continue with compression down the body. So. Uh, follow here. So come over here, my place. So I'm simply going to turn the body, and we're going to compress here into the side of the body, trying to get some space in between uh, the ribs. And if you're working on someone, and they do have the flexibility to do this, I would advise positioning the arm overhead. That's okay for you, because mm -hmm. this just stretches the area a little bit more. So you want to start with your compression just immediately below the inferior angle of the scapula. Okay, so we're right in here. So take a nice inhale, please. And exhale. And I'm just working my way down. I'm, add I'm adding a little depression of the hip to continually open this area up. Now when you're coming down, and here's the angle of the ribs, these last two ribs are considered the floating ribs. So they're not attached like the rest of them to the sternum, so they have a fragility in them where you don't want to press on them too hard. Okay? So it's easy pressure. But the area you like to focus on, which has a tendency to get crunched and stuck, is the soft tissue just below the 12th rib and just above the iliac crest. So to get into this area, and again, the arm overhead, if that's still okay for you. It's okay? Um, helps facilitate this openness and opens this space up. Because some people, the space is very, very minimal here. So this helps open that area up. 
one way of addressing it is what's called a dragon's mouth, where you overlay your thumb and index finger here to create this space. And have an inhale, please. And on the exhale, you sink right into that soft tissue. And you notice also two extended arms, and I'm leaning in on the exhale. Sixth intercostal space. Oh, no, not the source point, but it was another point. It was like between the um, like end of the 11th rib and the axillary.